Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to take a look at a different way to record MIDI. Now many of you probably don't have great keyboard skills. I definitely don't have great keyboard skills but that shouldn't necessarily be a barrier to you creating music using a computer. After all the computer can do a lot of the tidying up after you've made mess. I wouldn't have a job otherwise. Um, now I'm going to show you two ways. So in this video I'm going to show you one way and then in the next video I'm going to show you a different way. So this way involves you being able to record in real time where you record the rhythm first and then after that you can correct the pitch of the notes. So often I've found in class situations this is good for people who are a bit, you know, maybe a bit nervous and know what they want to do but they can't quite get it out on the keyboard and maybe the practice to do that is a fair way away. After a while you get better at this even if you don't explicitly practice it but this is one way to allow you to record the rhythm of what you want and then add the the pitches afterwards so all we're going to do is record the part just playing a single note on the keyboard so i'm going to use on-screen keyboard so you can see what i'm doing but i'm just going to record just the rhythm so i'm just going to be pressing in my case the q key on the keyboard so i've got a retrolog set up if i press the q on the keyboard you can hear just playing just that C, that's it. That's all I'm going to record. And then I'm going to add the pitches afterwards. So the second bit is probably the, the important bit. So all we're interested in at the moment is getting the rhythm of the part right. So I'm just going to turn the click on, go back to the beginning, hit record, and then play the rhythm of the little short phrase I want to record. So there we go, a little bit out of time, easily fixed. So open it up, we're in eighths there. So hitting Q, once I've turned the on-screen keyboard off, it's gonna fix that. So now we've got the rhythm of what we want. Which is, you know, fairly mundane. The real thing is faster, it's actually about 220. So. I can speed it up. So that's one way to make things easier is just to record them at a lower speed and then change the tempo afterwards. So now this is much more. But the pitch obviously isn't right unless I listen to some very repetitive music. So now we're going to do the thing which really I've brought you here for today, which is entering the pitch. So what we're going to do is select the first note. I'm going to scroll down a bit so you can see where we're going with this and now this is the button we're after now by default that won't be there so I'm going to turn it back to how it would be normally so normally you wouldn't see that here so you won't see that by default typically so you press this cog not that one not that one but this one press that and then tick step and MIDI input if you've got a small screen, you may need to turn something else off to be able to see it. So you might find you want to turn off multiple part controls or possibly even tool buttons, although you're probably still using them at the moment. So I'm going to just turn off, sorry, turn on step MIDI input and you can see it fits in there. Okay. Now, once we're there, we get two things. So step input is what we're going to be looking at in the next video. But today's video, we're going to be looking at this here, which is MIDI input, which may seem a bit superfluous. But what that actually allows you to do is to play in some elements of the MIDI without altering others. So we're going to turn this on and now it turns on these buttons here. And the thing that's really crucial, as long as this is turned on, that's what matters. So that means record pitch. So when we start playing pitches on the keyboard, the notes we've got selected will change. So the first note that I press on the keyboard will change this pitch and then the next note I change on the keyboard or press on the keyboard will change this pitch and so on. So it'll be a bit clearer when I show you. So I'm going to turn the on-screen keyboard on so you can see what's going on. And then when I press this first note, typically the first note is a C but it's actually up an octave. So I'm going to change up an octave with the right cursor key. And then when I hit Q, this is going to move. Now you don't always hear these. There's something funny going on but I wanted to show you this anyway. So the first one is up an octave. And then the, the next note is the same note again. And then we go up to a E and then a G. And I'm going to play the rest of it. Okay. So 
there I've put in all the notes just by playing on the keyboard. And the, the advantage of this is I've got as much time as I want to play them. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and just show you again. So I click on this one here. I'm going to press that first C. I can go off and, you know, get a bite, as Nigel Tufnell would say, and then come back and then do this one then. So I can do it whenever. It does, you've got no time pressure at all. So if you're reading music or you're you're working out what you've played on guitar, which, you know, you, you often you find, oh, I don't know what note I'm actually playing on the guitar. You're working it out and then translating this to the keyboard. Whatever, wherever the, the process, the part of the process is that slows you down, it doesn't matter because you've got as much time as you want and then you can go, right, oh, yeah, it's a C now. And then it's an E and then a G and then an E and then a G and so on. And then D, F, A, etc. So this opens up all sorts of possibilities. Remember though, once you've finished, turn this off. I guess it's orange for a reason and that means, oh, you might not want this on all the time. So yeah, turn this off because otherwise random key presses on your keyboard, your MIDI keyboard, etc., will start altering notes without you realizing it. So once that's turned off, you're back to normal. The keyboard will work normally, etc. And then you've got a MIDI part you've created. No one's any the wiser. It looks as if you've played it. This is a great way to, to create all sorts of things, particularly arpeggiated style figures. So that's what we're going to look at now. I'm just going to delete this. And let's say you wanted to just create something like an arpeggio. Now, Keybase Elements doesn't have an arpeggiator. It doesn't have MIDI effects, which is a bit of a limitation, but you can simulate them pretty quickly. So we're going to use the line tool here, and then I'm going to change this to 16th. And then once you've got snap turned on, like we have here, if you use the line tool, it creates individual notes wherever the line is. So it doesn't really matter where I put the line, but I'm just going to make it go just in a straight line. So we see that those are the notes there. And now we can use this MIDI input mode to add the notes on top. So we can just, if you want to just play random notes, you can play random notes, etc. Or if you want to do some kind of fast arpeggio part, you can do that. Now I'm going to slow the tempo down for when we play it, because otherwise it will be a bit full on. Put MIDI input on. I'm going to change back to the arrow tool and press that first note. And now again, I'll put the on-screen keyboard on, and I'm just going to sort of play some arpeggiated notes on the keyboard. So it's like a C major 7 arpeggio. If we play that back, again, I'll turn the keyboard off to avoid any confusion. If we play that back now, once that's turned off, for safety. Now, obviously, you could play that on the keyboard and put it in, or you could type it in, etc. you know, put it in, drawing it in, and so on. But this, I find this is a quick way to do it, particularly if you've got a MIDI keyboard and you want to play more interesting things across it, you can play arpeggios. So we could just quickly play arpeggios through the whole keyboard range of the mini keyboard on screen. Etc. that kind of thing. Again, didn't hear all the notes. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but they, they do get played when you play it back. That kind of thing. So it opens up all sorts of possibilities for things you maybe can't achieve in real time. In the next video, we're going to look at step input, which is a, a variation on that theme, but it's a little more complicated for reasons that will become clear in that video. But as far as MIDI input is concerned, I hope you find that useful, and I'll see you again soon.